In our last two chapters, we talked about reflection and refraction. And in this chapter, we're going to bring both of those elements together and talk about how to combine reflection and refraction using something called a Fresnel term. Now, before we talk about the math uh, and how to set up the code to create a Fresnel term, I, I want to just go over really quickly the, the theory behind uh, and when what a Fresnel term is. Now, the, the, the word Fresnel comes from the name of a French physicist named Augustine Jean Fresnel. And that last name is spelled F-R-E-S-N-E-L. And you might think that's pronounced Fresnel, but it's actually Fresnel because it's French. Anyway, so this French physicist um, did a lot of experimenting with reflection and light and came up with some theories and developed some algorithms for how light interacts with uh, translucent, transparent objects. Basically, one of his theories and, and formulas um, shows how light uh, is more reflected on objects at glancing angles or around the edges of objects than they are uh, straight on. And, and you can see this in, in a lot of different objects. For example, if you look at a kitchen table, for example, if you're looking straight down at the table, you see the wood grain. But if you look at the table edge on, most likely you'll see uh, reflections. So objects are more reflective at glancing angles than they are looking straight on. And this is a property that's true for liquids like water. So if you look straight down in the water, chances are you'll see through if the pool's not very deep. You'll see through the water to the bottom and you'll actually see refraction. But if you look at the water edge on, or sort of parallel to the surface, what you'll see is, is likely the, the sky reflected from the water. So it's a combination of both refraction and reflection uh, using what we call the Fresnel term, uh, or, or you know, a kind of a balance of where does that uh, refraction turn into reflection. And so let's jump in and create a Fresnel term. Now I want to I want to stress here up front though in in this chapter we're going to be using a Fresnel term to combine reflection and refraction. But really uh, the the principles and 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 the shader code that we're creating can be used for all kinds of things, not just combining reflection and refraction, but it can be used for creating edge lighting. It can be used for making a surface, like I said before, like a, a kitchen table, uh, reflective on the edges, but not straight on, all kinds of things. So this is a really flexible piece of math. So let's come into our shader here. We're going to come into this line just under refracted color, and we're going to get going. We're going to say float Fresnel, Fresnel term. And we're going to do just the very core most part of the Fresnel term, which is a dot product between the I vector and the normal. So let's take a look at what we get if we're only using that as our Fresnel term. So comment out this and we'll return just our Fresnel term. Hit save, come over here to max, and there we go. Basically what this gives you is it's as if your teapot is being lit by the camera, right? So if I rotate around here, the light source is coming straight from the camera. And that's because we're measuring the angle between the eye and the normal. So when the normal is pointing straight at me or straight at the viewer, it's going to give you white. And when it's pointed perpendicular, perpendicular to the viewer, it's going to give you black. And that's basically what we want for our Fresnel term, except... In this case, we want it to be opposite. We want it to be white on the edges and black in the middle. It's really easy to do that. We can just invert the value by doing uh, 1 minus the dot product of V and N. We'll save that, update it over here. Now we have our white on the edges and our black in the middle. Well, that's really all we need to combine the reflection and the refraction. Well, so let's jump ahead. We'll leave our Fresnel term like that for now. And let's jump ahead and go ahead and combine our reflection and refraction. So we're going to say float for reflection and 
refraction equals, and we're going to use our intrinsic function lerp to blend between two values. In this case, the refracted color and the reflected color from up here. And we're going to use our Fresnel term. And so what our lerp function is saying is wherever our Fresnel term is black, we're going to get refraction. And wherever it's white, we're going to get reflection. So reflect, reflection on the edges, refraction in the middle, which is exactly what we're looking for. So let's copy that. We'll comment out, return our Fresnel term. Whoops. And we'll return our reflection and refraction. Save that, come back over to max, and bingo. There we have our combination of reflection and refraction. But you'll notice here our reflection is blurry. This is kind of a holdover from when we were creating metal. So if we come back up here, we're using TextCube LOD, and the, text, and the LOD part of that allows us to specify which LOD we're using. Well, that's not exactly what we want for this. We want our reflections to be sharp. So we're just going to use text cube. Now text cube doesn't use float four. It just uses the reflection vector itself. So I'm going to get rid of this float four bit. And I'm going to get rid of this bit over here that lets us choose which LOD we're using. And we'll save that. And now you'll notice that our reflections are nice and sharp. So there you have it. We've combined our reflection and our refraction. If I zoom in here, you can see my house refracted through the teapot and this reflection of the pine tree over here on this side. We've successfully combined our reflection and our refraction. And that's great, but our Fresnel term is not really giving us the flexibility that we need. We don't have any control over uh, the, the different components of this. I can't choose to make the refraction more visible and maybe push the reflection toward the edges and that sort of thing. So we need to come back to our Fresnel term and sort of beef it up a little bit. So I'm going to come back down here and just for now I'm going to comment out the reflection and refraction part of it. We're going to turn, return just our Fresnel term again. And let's come up here to the Fresnel term and, and just add a few things. The first thing that we want to do is push this gradient so it's more white right at the edge, but, but more black, more in the middle. And the way that we do that is with the POW function, or we raise our Fresnel term to a power. So I'm going to take this bit, and let's just start out by hard coding it to a power of 4. We'll save that, and update it in max, and yeah, look at that. It's pushed our gradient all the way to the edge, so we only get the white right around the edges, which is exactly the effect that we're looking for. Cool. Well, uh, let's add one more little control here. Um, we can multiply this whole thing by, uh, let's say we multiply it by three. And what that's going to do is pump up the brightness around the edges. So save our shader, it'll update over here in max. And yeah, wow. So our edges are now uh, really bright. So we've added two hard coded values. Uh, power and a, a brightness multiplier. And what we really want to do is expose these values to the user. So I'm going to come up here to the top of the shader and right here under refraction index, I'm going to copy this guy and paste it again to give myself another slider. And we're going to call this Fresnel Power. And our Fresnel power is going to go from 0 to 10. And a UI step of 0.01 is fine. We're going to give it the name Fresnel power. And let's default it to, I think we're using 4. And we'll make ourselves another one. And we'll call this one Fresnel brightness. Same values. And for now, brightness, and we'll default this one to three, which is what we're using down below. So I'll copy Fresnel power, come down here, and we're going to replace our four with Fresnel power, and we're going to replace our three 
with Brunel brightness. Now, if I did this right, when I save it, you won't see any difference over here. Yeah, no change. But when I bring up the material panel, now I have these two sliders, so I can, can interactively control the Fresnel power. So you can see as I move this guy, it pushes the gradient more to the edge. And I can also interactively control the Fresnel brightness, so I can brighten it up. And let's turn our power down, our brightness down. Anyway, so I have these nice controls over exactly how my Fresnel term is affecting this black to white gradient. Okay, so now that we've added the extra controls in, let's come back in and comment this piece out. And now we're going to return reflection and refraction. So we'll save this. Now it updates, and now we've got our reflection and our refraction. What I can do here is raise this power value to move the reflection more toward just the edges of the teapot. And I can use the brightness to boost up the brightness of the reflections right around the edges. So I give the artist control over exactly how that Fresnel term is affecting our combination between reflection and refraction. Anyway, like I said before, uh, so we've completed our combination of reflection and refraction. And like I said before, you can use this Fresnel term for a lot more than just combining reflection and refraction. You can use it for, you know, faking rim lighting or adding reflections just to the edges of objects, all kinds of different effects with uh, the Fresnel term. So very useful bit of code. That uh, completes this chapter and this section on reflect, reflection, refraction, and Fresnel terms and combining them together. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about taking uh, detail mapping to another level with detail normal mapping.